how much worse are these bad batches? Do they have twice as many adverse events? Can you give us a, an idea of scale? So there's some batches that had uh, 1,000 plus deaths. I have a request with yes. the FDA fighting to get the files that I just talked about that you have on your site. So I'm fighting yes. to get those information and more so we can make comparisons. But the some of those files had anywhere from 100 to 1,000 deaths per batch compared to zero. Oh, boy. And when we do this in a lab, in a cell, so here's, this is a really awesome thing for you to bring up. So when you make a mon, like a recombinant protein in a lab, hmm. you take RNA, you take a gene sequence first and you, you grow it up, you do what's called amplify, and then you do codon optimization, which I guess you don't need to, anyone watching, just like blow by those words. And you put them inside a lipid nanoparticle. And then right now I just want to talk about it in the lab. You, if you were going to make a protein and I want to compare that to the human body because then it's going to get really scary. So in a lab, you've got stringent conditions, you've got temperature held, you've got chemicals held, uh, you're using very strict amounts and you're only using one to two cell types typically, which would be human embryonic kidney cell 293, that's HEC 293 or CHO, Chinese hamster ovary. And it, when you make a protein in a lab for a company, you know, they want the maximum amount of protein at the, the, the cleanest it can be. So you, you mix that RNA with the LNP and you do what's called transfect and it goes into a cell and the cells will pump it, pump it, pump it out. And sometimes the cell either spits it out of the cell. Sometimes it stays in the cell, the protein, I mean, sometimes you have to break them apart. And then uh, it's funny because I, I was just doing a, uh, showing someone I was going to grab for a prop because I did that on camera somewhere else. So then, so then it's put these through these cylindrical Cylindrical columns, they're called, and you, we have what's, what's called size exclusion chromatography because you have to get the protein out and separate it out from the DNA and everything else. If you're going to, like a monoclonal antibody that's used, that's how these are made. So you're filtering them, you're separating them, you're, you're using exact amounts each time. And then, you know, for a monoclonal antibody, you know, you've got issues with the protein with RNA. Sometimes it misfolds, Matt. And um, again, I wish I had something like if, uh, you know, protein, a protein looks like a, oh my gosh, so lucky <laughs> I was showing somebody this. So protein, like, have you oh, seen like the squiggly lines of all this? Uh, yeah. I was giving a little instructional video to friends on how the, you know, it's a whole mass of those and it can come out misfolded and it's not uncommon from, for the RNA to produce a protein in a cell, which is misfolded. And that's really bad. That can cause disease that can turn off other cells. It can turn off processes. And in the lab, that's put through a two-step process with what's called a, a buffer and a detergent, a protein detergent, almost like your, your soap. And that's refolded properly. But we could, we could repeat the same project. Like if you said, Christy, I want you to do that thing over again, same conditions, exactly the same. You want to use one cell line. And we could have a, a different result because there's a phrase we always use, which is biology is going to do what biology is going to do. And that's in a lab. We're not even talking about immune system here. Mm. So when it's going into the human body, it's genetic material entering a cell. We're effectively doing to people what we did in a lab, except there's. Mm. So I just want to stress that there's. And you have an immune system and you have the body saying. Uh, so while everyone's freaking out about the pegylated, that's really not the worst part of it. The cholesterol and the ionizable are really the worst part, which we haven't even talked about the cholesterol. But uh, while your body has an immune response at the same time, it's like that phrase, shut up, go away, come here. It's like, you don't belong here, but I'm going to have this immune response. But at the same time, I want to interact with you and do all the processes I would do with normal lipids. And am I allowed to swear? Like, it's going to like you mess are. stuff up. It's going to up <laughs> but not in everybody so it's different in the way from traditional vaccine is it's not a virus mm. it's going it's using the bodies they like to say machinery and they're using new technology and i don't like that term either because i feel like the change in linguistics has made people think it's <laughs> it is that it's it's recombination of genetic material to produce something that's never been produced in your body and your body has to read with the ribosomes and the endosomes as it goes through the cells, your body has to read this piece of like, a, pretend this is RNA and it's just a piece of RNA. Your body has to read that 
and then it's got these sequences in it and then it, it's going to make a protein, but sometimes the body, so if it misfolds in the lab, it's going to you and the body doesn't have a buffer or a detergent to refold it properly. And that can lead to and yeah, it, it is not, it is protein expression in in our, yeah, it's, it's genetic recombination material. I don't, I don't have a phrase for it. But what about just turning off? Like it, I know it seems simple, but how does the cells know to stop making this spike protein? And how does it, as we've just said, it doesn't stay localized. So maybe you could also take me into this um, idea of it traveling um, to the ovaries and, and like the, the FOI requests and, and so on. And, and where does it end? Where does this chain reaction kind of thing end? So the pseudouridine, so there's uh, pseudouridine, and then it has more than one cap on the end, and we'd have to go into cap and tail. And uh, again, I don't want to glaze anyone's eyes over, but it has it has certain parts to it on the RNA itself that make it last longer because the body wants to break it up because it, it sees it as RNA and it, it wants to get rid of it, but there are things that hold it together, and then also perhaps the pegylated part, part of the lipid nanoparticle holds it within the machinery. So the ribosome and the endosome in that area, it, it makes it stay longer than what it should. Mm. So it will make the spike protein longer than your body would make another protein. I just like to pin that for a second, the liver and liver is making proteins all day long. Like it's its job, but the, the reports that I've read, and I'm sure like people watching and you Matt, like, they, they're finding spike protein at least. And then there's people who've like noticed it for later and there's conflicting stuff and for these studies. And when you asked how, how do you turn it off? 